does erythritol cause heart disease? Hi, Dr. Eric Westman here with another episode of Dr. Westman Reviews. Be sure to look down below for the top 10 tips to start keto the right way. It's in the description below. Now, I've been following low-carb keto diet research for over 20 years now, and it certainly caught my eye to hear a headline that said erythritol and because erythritol is found in keto diets, that keto diets and erythritol might cause heart disease. That certainly would be news to me. Haven't seen it in my practice or research for the last 20 years, but I'm always looking for the first uh, novel information. So I'd like to just take you through this article that came out. It was, um, well, first, what I expected. <laughs> first slide, please. I expected, you know, a perfect study would be an experimental study to show that erythritol causes heart attacks. It would go like this. You would have people, so I envisioned in my head there were either people normal without heart disease or, or at risk for heart disease or people with heart disease, because I know doing a clinical trial with these sorts of patients, um, you may need a lot of people in these clinical trials. So I'm anticipating a study that would be a randomized trial. That's what the R means there, R and the circle. And what randomization does is it, it eliminates or reduces bias between groups. So if you have an outcome between two groups or, or more, you want to make sure that there wasn't some other factor, a confounding factor that might explain what the findings of the study were. So an experimental trial, randomizing people to drinking or eating erythritol in products or, or, or by itself, that, that would be fine. And then there would be a group that had no erythritol and the, they would be followed over a period of time and then you would see if they had heart attacks or not. So I was expecting, you know, I, I'm <laughs> waiting for that shoe to drop any minute now. The study's going to come out showing what I've been using safely for 20 years doesn't work. No, it does work. It's unsafe. Well, I think it is safe. Well, anyway, so <laughs> there's always this fear that there's something going to show up to show that it's all, you know, all going to unravel. Well, that hasn't happened in 20 years. And I was expecting a study like this. That would that would turn my head. Well, it's not what they did. So the next slide, please. The actual study with Kowski et al. in Nature Medicine, February 27, 2023. They started on the right-hand side of this slide. They started people uh, with people who had heart disease and heart attacks. And they looked at the blood erythritol level. There was a high level in some people, a low level in others. And the people with the high levels had heart attacks. I mean, in some cases, over that three-year period, there were three different cohorts, up to 50% had a heart attack. And then in the lower blood levels, they had a lower rate of heart attack. Still, that's very high. That's, uh, so that, that caught my eye. That, that we're talking about a serious problem, if there is one here. Um, however, you go into the study further, they never assessed how much erythritol was being consumed by these people. I mean, I assumed if the headline said erythritol, eating erythritol is bad, maybe they assessed whether erythritol was consumed. No, they didn't. They, uh, in fact, some of the people were studied before many of these products out there were available with erythritol in them. And then I learned, I don't know much about erythritol, honestly. Um, it's a marker of glucose metabolism. And in there, they, they mentioned in, in the article that it can be seen normally in the blood. Well, so at each, stand, each point here, bias can be introduced. You know, were you really checking people who were eating or consuming erythritol? Well, we have no idea. Uh, and then the participants had a range of heart failure, diabetes, healthy... You know, what, was there any bias in the assortment of, of these people having high or low levels? And so we're going from right to left rather than left to right in an experimental trial. So each time you make these steps, there's a cause for, for interference or confounding, it's called. Um, so, you know, it's just, I wish they'd done a simple study going forward 
with experiments. In fact, if I was a reviewer of this study, I would have said, no, you can't publish this. Go back and do a randomized trial and prove whether it's really a cause or not. We don't even know if people are eating uh, the, uh, these products. So anyway, next slide, please. So let's see what the different groups were. So they had quartiles, meaning different fourths of blood levels and going from the low to high. Quartile one is the low blood level. Quartile four is the high level. And this is from the um, supplemental material. So you wouldn't get this in the article itself if you read it. Uh, you had to go to the supplement. And what you see here is um, in three different groups, they uh, had average ages going up in every quartile. So the people who had lower erythrotol levels and lower heart attacks were younger. Hey, wait, that those who were having heart attacks were older. Well, that kind of makes sense that it, maybe it's not the erythritol. Wait, there were people, more people with diabetes in the highest quartile of erythritol group, and, and there are more people with heart failure in the higher group. In fact, the heart failure percent in this European cohort, they called it, there were 84% who had heart failure in the highest quartile of erythritol. So these groups are not the same. And this is one problem with going backwards. You want to go forward and have a bias reducing or eliminating a procedure like randomization. So next slide, please. When I looked at the actual figure in the, the paper, blood erythritol levels and mortality, my word, this is a three-year event-free survival of 80%. This is 20% of people having an event in the next three years. I mean, th this is this is bad stuff if it makes this happen. Uh, you know, I'd only, I remembered a similar graph like this. And in my background as an internist, next slide, please. Heart failure has this kind of graph. Heart failure and mortality. I just pulled a recent paper looking at a drug treatment for heart failure. You can see here over the five-year period, the survival was only 25% in heart failure. So if you truncate it to about three years, the the 75% even people die with heart failure. Wait, but the heart failure people were more commonly seen in the high quartile. But if this is what's going on with erythritol, this is as bad as heart failure. This is this is serious stuff. And again, I don't know much about erythritol. I do remember that heart failure. So let, let's go back and look at these quartiles of the fourth quartile where there's this high mortality of erythritol. They're the ones with the high heart failure. In the discovery cohort, 33% had heart failure. In the validation cohort, 38%. And then the European validation, 84% of people had heart failure with these high erythritol levels. And I'm pretty sure they didn't say erythritol caused the heart failure. No, they didn't. They were talking about recurrent events. Uh, and uh, also on this slide, the diabetes uh, is much more prevalent in those with the highest quartile. So like any good researcher, and you can do this too, I went to PubMed and just searched erythritol, heart failure. Seven papers came up. The first paper, I'm looking at this in 2013, actually in the abstract had these idea, these uh, uh, elements are elevated in those with heart failure and erythritol is one of them. <laughs> so wait a second. So looking at this paper, it's been known that erythritol is elevated in heart failure. Now this is without regard to eating or drinking erythritol, it's a finding. This paper had nothing to do with consuming uh, these products, and it was back in 2013. There was a, you know, in the paper, they said that this is something seen in the blood. They didn't mention that it's seen elevated higher in those with heart failure. Now, it took me about a, you know, half a minute to do a PubMed search if, to find this paper. If, if I was a reviewer, I would have done, I would have found this paper and said, hey, wait a minute, put this in your article but apparently the review process did not tell them to do so. So back to the actual study. 
The next slide, this is slide nine. There were these people, participants, they didn't measure erythritol and, and, and they looked at blood erythritol and those with higher blood levels had higher heart attacks, but jeepers, creepers. <laughs> what happened is this, is that they recapitulated that elevated blood erythritol is linked to heart failure and heart failure has a grim prognosis. You don't want to go down that direction. This study has no relevance to eating or drinking erythritol. And it, it really is, I don't know, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to see a group, the amount of money that went into this sort of, of program, it, it's amazing how much this research costs. And it's embarrassing that, that this was all just a big distraction, either whether it was on purpose or not, or they kind of bumbled upon recapitulating the fact that heart failure is bad. I'm not sure, but the bottom line for me is I'm not going to change my advice to, for people to have low carb, high fat diets. If you want to look at my method, check out my YouTube channel. Look at uh, the description below for, for the top 10 tips to start keto right. Not that everyone needs to do a keto diet, but it's helpful for a lot of people. If you like this, you know, like it, subscribe, ring the notification bell. Let me know some other topics to, to take on. Um, this is, you know, much ado about nothing. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And check out AdapterLifeAcademy.com.